Tears for Fears with Shout there. It's a good song. I enjoy Tears for Fears. It's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. They don't, they don't make music like that anymore. <laughs> they no, really they don't. don't. They don't. Anyway, you're listening to Movie Groove on Energy Groove Radio, transmitting live from Sydney, all around the world. What were we talking about before? The Hobbit. Yes, what, what, did you see The Hobbit over the holidays? I did, um, I went to the, uh, the big full 3D 48 frame rate. Now, uh, explain to me the 48 frame rate. Is that a slower frame rate than normal? No, it's, um... a faster one? The film has always been shot in a 24 frames per sec, so that's 24 still images per sec. Yeah. That make up the moving image. Right. Uh, and this is shot in digital, and they go with 48 frames. Hmm. Um, which makes, according to some people, the picture, you know, sharper, crisper, cleaner, nicer. What it does is it makes it look like it's shot in video. Right. So it feels inherently cheap. Sandra wasn't ready for it. Uh, she she leaned over and she went like, why does it look like it's shot in video? <laughs> <laughs> really? It does, yeah. So Because oh. video, um, uh, video is 29, uh, 20. for, for the technically minded, 29.7 frames per second. And so with the faster frame rate it looks crisper and so it, and because you're aware because all of the stuff you've ever seen shot on video is that cheap tv yeah um sitcom kind of stuff it just feels inherently cheap and so that's what it makes the movie feel like as well so interesting it didn't bother me that much but sandra was like eh. <laughs> and it does the the thing that it does is that all those um all those things that uh, filmmakers have been relying on for decades to cut for the 24 frame rate to cover up it's yeah. now glaringly obvious, so you can see that it's a set, and you can see their costumes. Yeah, right. You can really see the makeup, so they have to get it right down to the last detail, whereas before, set builders like painting something. I don't bother painting that, they'll never see it. Now they have to paint it. <laughs> so. Dear me. Well, yeah, I haven't seen it, mm. um, so I don't know a great deal about the plot, what happens, but I did have a few friends go and see it, and they didn't care for it. Yeah. They did not really enjoy it that much. Well, the, yeah, the, um, the dwarves... And the Hobbit, they they move towards the mountain, and then they go into the mountain, and then they meet a dragon. Who likes gold, supposedly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's a fairly simple book. <laughs> so um, they've, they've really done a lot to sort of pad it and stretch it all out, and uh, you're either with it or you're not, and I wasn't with it. I was thinking this is sort of cutting on awfully long and it's silly and melodramatic and overplayed. And I thought the first one was a uh, touch long. Mm. Too long for me. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to sit there for more than an hour and a half. Do you uh, think Peter Jackson's lost it when it comes to the big uh, epic trilogies? I don't think it matters. No. <laughs> He's still going to get money it's to make them true. because, there's, because uh, yes, uh, the first one made two hundred ninety-three million all up, and that's more than the first two of the original trilogy combined. Hmm. So it's doing quite well. People are toddling off to see The Hobbit. And Martin Freeman is excellent in it. Nobody can do a confused double take like that guy. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, in other movie news, uh, we're now going to do the Geekly News. Uh, we need another musical sting for this beer ad, please. <laughs> I'm going to record that and we're going to use that every <laughs> week. <laughs> Every single week. Anyway. It, had, it had spirit fingers with it. That was where <laughs> yes. that was where most of my effort went. I'm spirit sorry. fingers don't work on radio. No, I There's know. nobody telling I know you that this. Now. We don't even have the webcam on. Wasted energy. I'm sorry. <laughs> money, 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 money. They're throwing <laughs> as much as they possibly can at these superhero movies. Over at Time Warner, they've been working very, very hard to get uh, Batman and Superman some legs. Uh, Has that got an official title yet? Uh, no, at the moment it's just oh. Batman versus Superman, so mm. far as I'm aware. But there's news that it's there, there's noise that it's going to actually turn into a prequel to the justice league movie which got greenlit the moment um avengers finished its uh, opening weekend there is this whole universe <laughs> that i'm missing and it's there's something weird with the whole dc avengers thing because traditionally back in the 60s uh, uh, marvel always did better than dc the marvel stable of heroes always did better than dc they just seem to be having a lot more fun with it hmm. whereas dc's uh uh, more self-serious and yet sillier at the same time. And their continuity gets very, very confusing. It got so confusing, in fact, that they had to start inventing new dimensions for the same character to have different kind of things happen to them in. And then they had to collapse all of those different dimensions in the, a big, long-running story called Crisis of Infinite Earths, where lots of people got killed and then they rebooted everything. And they've oh. recently done it again with a, a series called The New 52, where they've just taken everything back to the beginning and rebooted it yet again. Well, that sounds awfully convenient for them. 
Uh, it's comics. Lovely one. Have you ever heard of the bu- You've never heard of the Bucky Barnes clause? No. Um, only three, <laughs> Should I? Only three characters in comics can never, ever, ever, ever come back to life. Bucky Barnes, who was Captain America's sidekick. Ben Parker, uh, who is uh, Uncle Ben Parker of Spider-Man fame. Oh, yes. And Jonathan Kent, adoptive father of Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman. Okay. Those are the only three characters that will never come back to life. Everyone else, don't worry, they'll be back. Well, there you go. You know. <laughs> the, apparently, the Marvel heaven has a revolving door on it. Uh, wait a minute, we're talking about geekly news. Ooh, this is a good one. What? Looks like Bruce Willis and M. Night Shyamalan are going to be working together again. Excited. Me I'm, I'm I'm cautious <laughs> about Ca- it. Cautiously optimistic? Cautiously optimistic, like I am with every M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I always assume... Yeah. Yeah, I always assume they're going to be rubbish. Uh, the Sixth Sense, of course, was a revelation in Tour de Force. It was absolutely fantastic. Everybody saw it a couple of times. Uh, and then he and Bruce worked together again on uh, Unbreakable, which wasn't entirely stupid. Unbreakable? Uh, I didn't see that. It's the slowest superhero movie in existence. Yeah. Look, the only the only <laughs> M. Night films that I thoroughly enjoyed were Signs, because mm. that was quite scary to me as a 14-year-old. Despite the ending? It was a bit... It was a bit preachy wasn't it well, no, well the ending was like the the aliens weakness is water oh that's right so despite all their technology and their smarts they've invaded a planet which is 75% s- water well the surface is 70%, 75% water and the beings are 70% water and that's a bit silly and, and water falls from the sky quite a lot they're even they're, they're running about in misty cornfields <laughs> what's the mist made of <laughs> so um, yeah they kind of lost me at that point. yeah uh, um, then devil uh, that was okay. Was it? It was okay. I never saw it. Didn't you? Oh. Well, because I watched um, The Happening. <laughs> yeah, that that lost a lot of uh, M. Night, the M. Night love. Funniest horror movie the ever. The trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, no, the wind is coming. Devil, lot... Devil was quite good, although that was preachy towards the end. Yeah. That was yeah. some, yeah. So um, they've gotten sillier and sillier. Anyway. Um, so Bruce is back. They're, they're working together again. Um, that could be... Good could be uh, completely. It could be. Well, uh, Bruce Willis in recent times has gotten kind of a reputation for uh, for not being present on set. He just kind of shows up, does his thing, and then walks away, and makes his money. You can tell how over the whole sort of movie star thing he is. Just sounds like what Harrison, what I imagine Harrison Ford to be like. Yes. So, mm-hmm. well, Bruce Willis apparently even worse. Not a very affable man apparently. If you ever see any of his more recent interviews, mm. um, the you know, sitting in an interview is absolutely the last place in the world where he wants to be. I shouldn't have to be here on Bruce Willis. <laughs> so, but time will tell. That might end up um, really being the bounce back for a Night Shyamalan, whose last, uh, last effort was After Earth. Oh, I didn't see that either. Which looks like it's it's got a nomination for the worst movie of the year. Oh, really? And the Raz got a Razzie nomination, a Razzie nod there. Um, yeah, Will Smith and Jaden Smith. It was, in, it was produced and written by Will Smith um, about a very, very famous, very talented man um, whose son has been living in his shadow, and uh, and then he gets a chance to shine. So it's very semi-autobiographical. I'm not kidding. Oh, that's terrible. And so uh, in the movie, Will Smith dials his performance down to like one oh to allow God. the kid to, to get the screen time. And so because the kid doesn't have the chops to carry the movie by himself, it's deadly dull. Oh, my God. It sounds like the biggest wank ever. It's definitely in the top ten. I have no desire to see that now. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> in other geek news, we've got more leaked images from the uh, the new X Men movie, the which you of, can't see. Uh, which you can't see, but if you head on over to End of Cool News, you can get an eyeful of them there. And guess what? They've gone with the same stupid rubber armor suits that they've used in every other X Men movie. Uh, that's one of the things that really annoys me about uh, superhero films. Uh, yeah, uh, ever since Batman, they've gone like, well, that worked, so let's do that again. So they weigh all of their actors down with this horrible, clunky rubber armor so they can't actually move. And then they say, all right, action sequence. <laughs> so, yeah, so they, again, they're, they're wearing the padded rubber armor and um, uh, and it's all in black. Um, but, you know, then you've got uh, Hugh Jackman with his shirt off. And, of course, we also have leaked images from the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's uh, um, generating a lot of... 
bars, isn't it? Well, well, because it's Michael Bay at the helm. And so fans are going like, well, oh, boo, Michael Bay, it's going to suck. And yeah, you're right, it is. Mm. It's Michael Bay. At least there'll be pretty things on screen to look at, I suppose. There's going to be lots of explosions. Yeah. You know, um, all the people who deal with pyrotechnics effects in uh, Hollywood are rubbing their hands together with glee. They're going, <laughs> that Michael industry Bay's. must love Michael Bay. Yeah, and Michael Bay is ramping up. We're going to eat for years. Yeah. Um, so there was some buzz last week when uh, a shot of... Uh, a rather unfortunate looking Halloween costume based on the movie was released on the net and nobody was impressed. <laughs> um, look it up on the internet. It's hilarious. Okay. So uh, I suppose to, to, <laughs> to ameliorate the damage caused by that horrible image, they've actually released a shot um, of a character from the actual movie. And yeah, it's, it's a guy in a rubber suit. So it's, it's a live action film then. It's not a CG eye fest it's nope. um no it is actually a man in a rubber suit well, yeah. there you go yeah so there you go how is he possibly supposed to animate his face with that anyway i don't know i guess there'll be some computer aided stuff surely um the bad guy looks like the bad guy from the comics and so fanboys will no doubt be very pleased with that at the very least um so that's the geekly news for this week <laughs> if you've got any geekly news why don't you hit us up on twitter the address is al's movie groove all one word with a capital a um, and uh, and tell us what you think. Is Michael Bay going to make another turkey? Or will he actually pull a good one out of the bag? Only time will tell. Another plane of air about being in love. Are you in love, Brad? No. No, no. no. <laughs> that's why I'm so bitter. Well, that's a conversation think... killer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm bitter and cynical and I'm quite happy with my, um, my dog and my chicken at home. For one so young, B-Rad, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> Imagine how I'm going to be when I'm pushing 50, 60. Shant. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, we were talking earlier about Frozen, the new Walt Disney thing. Now, obviously, yeah. this is not going to be a review as such because um, it's made a massive amount of money. So chances are, if you're interested in it, you've gone to see it already. Um, I don't think you'll be doing much damage with a negative review, though. No, it's, no, it's not a negative review, actually. Oh, good. really? Yeah. You like singing in films, do you? Uh, no, I don't. Um, mm. uh, generally, I don't. I did think that there was there was a bit too much singy in it. Um, something that I liked about Tangled, because Tangled was okay. Was there singing in Tangled? Yeah, but there wasn't as much. There was about, I would say, less than half of the, the musical numbers in it. Okay. And it kind of coasted on a lot on action and dialogue, which was quite nice. Um, whereas this one, they've gone back to the old, you know, we've got to have a, a song every 10 minutes. Every and, time uh, there's a new plot point, you better cover it with a song first. Yeah, if you don't like it, then you don't like it. And uh, I refuse to go and see Les Miserables for that reason, because... I'm just not into musical theatre, not into musicals. I... I'm not into watching people who are not famous for singing, singing. Yes, that too. You know? I don't appreciate that. I've heard... Uh, However, Rus Tim I've heard Curry Rus can do a pretty good rendition of... Uh, you know, okay, well, sweet we'll give, transvestite. We'll give Tim a pass, but it doesn't work for everybody. I've heard <laughs> Russell Crowe's band, and I'm not going to a movie with these things <laughs> oh, in either. Jesus. What are they called? Two sticks in a ute or something? Uh, 40 odd, 40 40 odd volts. 40 odd foot of grunt. Grunt, that's it. Yeah, so, I don't know. It, it's the kind of band name that uh, that you go with when yep. your lead singer is a big A list Hollywood star. Yeah. Um, anyway, Frozen. And, uh, and Walt Disney, he was a nice guy. <laughs> Despite the anti-Semitism, um, and uh, and he produced a great many animated features during Hollywood's golden age. Although, like everything else, uh, after his death, the quality seemed to drop off a little bit. Um, I suppose, as a creative director, you tend to lose a little of your authority when you've had your head removed from the corpse and connected to a bunch of life support machines. <laughs> um, but in any case, one day they'll work out how to get the giant armored robot suit walking properly, and um, and his reign of terror can begin. Interesting times. Um, <laughs> So, uh, this one doesn't have any talking cars, thankfully. Um, it's not a Pixar thing. Uh, it's gone way back to the traditional Disney slash Germanic Grimm style fairy tale. Um, but, you know, they've cleaned it up a bit and, and had all the elements of gore and regicide stripped out. Um, so, you know, all that stuff that has a tendency to, uh, to upset little Austrian kiddies. It, gets... it wasn't dark at all. Yeah, no, it didn't have any darkness. That can, no. that can upset little Austrian kids. They get so unhinged by it that they end up losing a testicle and having a stab at world <laughs> domination. It happens. Yeah, I just, I found it so bland. Ooh. Sorry. Okay. Well, moving on. Um, it is not uh, a ridiculous teen romance with a cute sidekick. Um, and that's something that you might have expected from the forward promotion. Stay with me here, because I know that you're thinking, well, that's what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the film 
contains not one, but two Disney princesses this time around, and the story has a good deal more meat in it, I think, than the standard will they or won't they, of course they will, I'm bored, can we please just go and eat plotline. So Elsa and Anna are tiny princesses who live in a castle, their loving parents uh, rule the land with benign wisdom, blah blah blah. Uh, Elsa has a magical power that allows her to freeze things and manipulate snow and stuff, and that nearly kills her little sister. They cure her, but she's got no memory of the incident, because magic, and the king and queen decide to make it their little secret. As she grows older, Elsa's power grows, and fearing the worst, she shuts herself off, which doesn't do much for her public profile. And then the king and queen are killed in a tragic plot contrivance. It's sad, actually. I was shocked when that happened. Yeah. That's the dark bit of I know. the film. Does she really need to be the Batman? She's, <laughs> she's already damaged enough. Yes. But, uh, and anyway, um, Anna runs straight into the arms of a Prince Charming action figure, and, uh, and that gets Elsa so PO'd that she makes a very public display of her powers, which, of course, creates the very real threat of the scared and superstitious citizens dragging her from her bed and driving a stake through her heart. Anyway, um, Elsa runs for the hills, quite literally, and she has a massive hissy fit in song, which covers the land in snow and ice and brings a cute little snowman called Olaf to life to cover the comic relief. So Anna sets off with a buff hick uh, and the obligatory anthropomorphic horse, only this time it's a reindeer, to make peace with Sis, break the curse and prove Joseph Campbell right yet again. Hmm. So at this point, were you tuning out? Uh, I was just thinking about what I was going through in the cinema. <laughs> this is horrible. They're going to sing another. Please don't yeah. sing another. Please don't sing. Oh, I was just on the edge no. of my seat the entire time, yeah. waiting for another song. Well, there but, you go. I think, well, there's nothing that really breaks them all, but the story is really well told, and the animation of the two princesses in particular is, is fantastic. Yeah, um, I'll give it that. The animation was amazing. Yeah, it, it, it's far better than, you know, even Pixar's more recent efforts, like, you know, the well-meaning but rather perfunctory Brave. It leaves that kind of in the shade, and it gets more interesting, I think, at the end. Because um, the entire third act, it went a different way with the whole sort of traditional Disney, you know, falling in love at first sight kind of a thing, which I thought was good. In a good way, I think there's a, there's a message a lot more positive for the kiddies in there. All those little girls who want nothing more than to be princesses. Uh, they might now have something a little more complex to aspire to. Something I, a little I more suppose. Three-dimensional. Yeah. Um, I mean, still, the characters annoyed me in the fact that one of them just wasn't going to be happy until she had a husband. Yeah, but she didn't... Yeah. But she also wanted a family love mm. as well, which is nice. So there was, a, you know... Anyway, um, it's not Disney's best, but it harkens back to the uh, animation renaissance of the 90s. It's got an engaging coming-of-age story. Note perfect production values. Um, Kristen Bell from Veronica Mars plays Anna. She's great in it. And uh, Adina Menzel, uh, who stars in the Broadway smash Wicked, Mm. And the role of Elsa. So, um, and she was absolutely fantastic. She's really got a fantastic voice for that belting out that that number. With. I thought um, some of the the dialogue was quite funny though. Yeah. At times, like some of the witty stuff that they had to say, I thought that was great. You see, you're lightening up. Um, <laughs> As you know, when they stopped singing and started talking, you enjoyed it. Yeah, but there was one song in particular though. I was listening mm. to the lyrics when she was singing. Um, it was early on in the film, and she said something like. I don't know whether I'm elated or just bloated. And I thought that was a hilarious <laughs> line. I was like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it, it is a bit of a step up from the recent fair. Um, it's a hell of a lot less of a chore to sit through uh, than, um, I don't know, uh, those parents out there who were recently forced to sit through Disney's Planes, a film so bad that it performs the seemingly impossible task of making you hate Dane Cook even more. <laughs> and why there's no howling mob marching on that gurning, flailing, arse clown's house with murder in mind, <laughs> I will never know. Uh, Frozen is still in cinemas if you want to go along and see it, and I can only recommend that you do. It's really good, and take the kids, they'll have a blast. I'm um, yeah. Now, did you buy, a lot of people are saying that there's a note of LGBT um, rights thing in it, because there's no love interest for Elsa. At the beginning, they, they make a big deal of how she should hide and she should not let it show and she should oh keep it hidden and be a good girl and all I that didn't, kind of I didn't stuff. pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah, but no. there were two princesses, essentially, mm. in this story. Yeah. Um, one of them just wanted to not be an outcast mm. and be accepted by her family and have that around her. Yeah. She got that. Mm. Well, she got her sister back. That's what she wanted. That was her goal. In any case. The other one wanted her sister back, but she also wanted to whore herself around a little bit. 
on the way. And good for her too. Good for her. She managed to do that. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Is there a note of LGBT pride in it, or is it all just uh, people reading far too much into it that it isn't uh, when it simply isn't there? Why not hit us up on our Twitter account? That's uh, Al's Movie Groove, all one word with a capital A. And uh, tell us if you think we're way off base here. That's Shane Phelan there with Knee Deep in My Heart. Uh, I really don't know what that means. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Knee Deep in My Heart. I didn't listen to the lyrics. Maybe I should have. God. If you know anything about what the lyrics mean, why not tweet us here? At Al's Movie Groove, that's all one word with a capital A. Nobody's tweeted yet. You're all over the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even I am that good at the computer. Well, um, it's it's the thing that these uh, these these modern young people do. Yes, I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> anyway, um, as I said, it's Oscar season, and so we're going to have a, uh, a look at the Oscar nominees. I was going to do a best and worst off picks, but let's face it: if you listen to a lot of movie shows, and everybody's done one of those, and it's all going to end up being the same. Um, so we'll just look, have a look at the Oscars list because uh, they've, you know, they've, they've thrown up a fairly predictable uh, list of potential winners here. Um, some of the more interest, some of the more predictable ones, like Gravity, which you've seen. Mm. Um, it's uh, an excellent science fiction film. I loved it. Yes, I was thoroughly entertained by it. All you have to do is add a, you know, one of the seats that moves around, and uh, yeah, you've got a. Uh, a theme park ride that lasts for an hour and a half. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> There's that much spinning in it. Yeah. But, um, um, uh, even though a lot of it is Sandra Bullock going like, ah, e, yeah, ooh, ah. But apparently, ah. some of the anti gravity, anti gravity, zero gravity stuff mm. that she did, a lot of it was just her using her own muscle strength to hold herself up. Really? Yeah. Mm. On some scaffolding type. I thought I did it on that plane. They've got a plane that just... <laughs> it just constantly goes up and down. Yeah. yeah, they, they, call, they call <laughs> it the vomit They comet. filmed the entire film on that. <laughs> yeah, um, so. <laughs> but George Clooney, he was like, he... I don't think he should get an Oscar for it. He was just playing George Clooney. Well, yeah. Well, like he does all the time. Yes, George Clooney is saying the role of George Clooney hmm. in the George Clooney role. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, uh, he's good at what he does, and that's being George Clooney. The people seem to like it. Hmm. Um, also, American Hustle, otherwise known as When Actors Go Wild, where David O. Russell is attempting to remake Goodfellas, um, just pointing a camera at his actors and letting them do whatever they like. That's got a nod for some reason. It won't win. Uh, Captain Phillips, which is apparently really good, where... Um, yes, Tom, Tom Hanks? Yeah. Tom Hanks bravely expels unwanted semen. No, apparently he beats off like 12 pirates. Um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, sorry. Um, the Dallas Buyers Club, I've got no idea what that's about. Uh, um, that is about, I think, a transgender situation. Won't win. Um, it's very indie. Yeah, yeah. So you... uh, Jared, Jared uh, Leto All right, is yeah. acting in that. Oh, star power. Um, we have Her, which is a story of a guy who falls in love with an AI. Oh, yes. um, I need to see that. Spoiler alert, it doesn't go well. Um, uh, Nebraska, no idea there, um, but uh, Bruce Dern is in it and he's getting uh, uh, accolades. I remember Nebraska performed not at all at the box office. It disappeared in its first week and nobody cared and nobody went. Mm -mm. But uh, now that he's getting a best actor nod, I'm assuming that they'll re-release it into theatres and it'll get a better second run. Crotchety old timer. Crotchety old. Who, yeah. Sounds like an Ang Lee film, mm. you know? Just beautiful to look at, but way too long and dry. And the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, yeah, uh, if 12 Years a Slave wasn't there, then I would be betting that Wolf of Wall Street would get the best picture. But no, 12 Years a Slave, it's the worthy one. It's going to win. It's the story of uh, Chew It All Edgy Four. And uh, yeah, uh, in case you're wondering, that is how you pronounce his name, Chew It All Edgy Four. I looked it up. I even listened to a sound sample on the internet. So unusually, for a guy who's got a weird arse spelling of his name, it actually is. It sounds the way it's spelled. Oh, well, there you go. So... That's yeah. what throws people. That's what throws people. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, Have you seen Twelve Years a Slave? No. Uh, it's it's one of those films where I know that I really should uh, watch it, but uh, it's never really seems to be the the night to watch somebody get tortured and beaten and tortured and beaten. You know, black man gets sold by evil white people to even more evil white people, and then saved by a nice white person. Yeah. You know? Because uh, all these movies tend to be, like all Hollywood movies, the black people always get saved by white people at the end. It's the way that it seems to work. Yeah. In a scriptwriter's head. Apparently. In an American <laughs> scriptwriter's <laughs> head, yeah, anyway. So, so there you go. And the nice white person is played by Brad Pitt. 
Uh, Did I just spoil the movie for everybody? I'm so sorry. You all knew that was going to happen at the end, right? Come on, it's a true story. Look it up. It's like, you know, what happens at the end of Titanic? Well. Um, uh, so, and Jutal Edgy of Four is up for Best Actor. Um, my tip there is that they're going to give it to Matthew McConaughey for the, uh, for the Dallas Buyers Club. Because oh, I that's think, right. He was in it. Yeah, he's paid his dues. He's been around for long enough. Leonardo DiCaprio is going to miss out on a Best Actor as, uh, again. Because that's just what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this uh, meme on the internet of all these different pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio crying in these <laughs> scenes in movies. And yeah. it says, give this man an Oscar please, already. Please give him an Oscar. Uh, no, because it's just Leo being Leo, yeah, as usual. He's, yeah. you know, he's, just, he's, like, he's one of those actors like Harrison Ford in the, back in the day. Yeah. You know, he was always Harrison Ford, whether he was playing the president or, you know... Uh, yeah. Uh, a retired cop. He's always one. Uh, there's a great sort of Family Guy sketch where he's just one, uh, grabbing random strangers and asking where these family is. <laughs> where's my family? Give me back my family. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so there's about 17 movies where he does that. Accurate. Anyway, um, a lot more interesting are the worst picture nominees. If you're familiar, if you're familiar with the Razzie Foundation, uh, who give awards away every year for the worst performances and pictures of the year. Um, Excellent. And uh, yeah, and they always invite the stars to come and accept their Razzies uh, live, and nobody ever does except for Halle Berry. Really? Interestingly enough, who got the worst actor nod for being in Catwoman. Turned up in person to accept her award. You're kidding. Yeah. Wow. Thanked her agent for, and I quote, putting me in this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. She's fantastic. So yeah, go to the Razzie's website. <laughs> um, her, uh, her, Oscar, her Razzie exception speech is on the front page. It's hilarious. Fantastic. So yeah, Halle Berry. She's got a sense of humor. God bless her. <laughs> so uh, yes, this year, the worst picture nominees are, uh, as we discussed before, the terrible M. Night Shyamalan disaster, After Earth with Will Smith and Will Smith Jr. Mm -hmm. Or Jaden Smith. Uh, and Jaden's also up for the worst actor um, for his performance in that movie. Yes, uh, which is about two people trying to survive being attacked by CGI things. Dear me. Mm. It just sounds awful. I know. But you can tell that Will Smith and Jaden... Yeah. Like, in I, I watched a few interviews mm. when that was being released, and uh, yeah. they really believed in the film. <laughs> yeah, no, the, it's <laughs> something that's a real shame about it is that it is so earnest but not earnest enough to be funny mm. in its badness, which is what the mark of a real bad movie is like Battlefield Earth, where you're like, wow, they're really trying to make this serious, and it's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the best kind of bad movie. I didn't even finish Battlefield, I'm afraid. Now, speaking of bad movies, um, uh, Adam Sandler, on the other hand, who ends up on this list every year because he's always got a movie out, um, worse, uh, Grown Ups too has... Uh, yet another of his pictures where he goes on holiday with his mates, pays them all exorbitant salaries. The studio picks up the tab, and then we're expected to pay to watch the uh, the footage. Um, <laughs> have you never noticed that? Yeah, well. You know, Jack and Jill, absolutely one of his worst. It's just like one long advert for Coca-Cola. You know, it's they actually stop the plot of the movie halfway through to plug a cruise. Where the characters, let's all go on a cruise. Oh, oh, wow, what kind of things do they have on this wonderful cruise ship? And then they show the camera. Oh. And, it, and you're just there praying for death. Bloody hell. Why am I watching an Adam Sandler movie? Sounds horrible. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so Grown Up to, Grown Ups 2 is a, a strong contender for the worst film of the year. Uh, we also have The Lone Ranger. A bad oh, that was... Oh, worst... Two hours. Did you watch that? Oh, I did. I you was went to see that? No, I didn't see it at the cinema. Oh, yeah, but you actually watched it. I did watch it. Um, it, w it went for way too long. Mm. It went for, I think it was two and a half hours or something ridiculous. Now, I'm confused here. Um, it hasn't been released on DVD yet, but you didn't see it in cinema. <laughs> we don't talk about no. how I access movies. It's a special right I have as a radio presenter. Yes. Uh, Brad will be buying a copy of that movie later on, uh, uh, if anybody from Disney is listening. <sighs> Jerry Bruckheimer, I'll just give him 20 bucks. Yeah, I don't want to actually own it, that thing on DVD. Or so, uh, if Jerry's agent can get on the phone, there's a straight, straightforward offer for 20 bucks <laughs> just to get this thing out of his it life. It really is. I honestly, I could not deal with that film. Uh, it uh, was just too long. A badly misjudged piece of crap. Um, it, Disney have filed 200 million in the loss column for that one. Yep. Really? So it's performed just as badly as John Carter. I, I watched the first half hour and I was reasonably entertained and then it got really shit. And it got really 
old really quickly. Yeah. And it stayed. It overstayed its welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. so angry by the end of it because that was two hours I could have been sleeping. Yeah. So um, uh, for all those Johnny Depp fans out there, don't, you know, if you've already seen it, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't seen it, don't go and see it. You know, it's... <laughs> it's not worth your time. It's, it's really, really not. not. Mm. But anyway, it's up for the uh, the worst movie of the year. There's a Tyler Perry movie in there, of course, some A Day of Christmas. Tyler Perry in uh, a fat suit doing his drag thing. and Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and a curious number called Movie 43. Uh, did you see this one? No. All right, way back in the day, like in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a couple of movies called The Groove Tube and Kentucky Fried Movie, which were just a series of sketches. Okay. Uh, and they were quite funny. And, uh, and they've tried to repeat that. Uh, 30 years later, they've tried to repeat that success with a thing called Movie 43, which is a series of sketches featuring some seriously A-list actors. Really? Yeah, there's Halle Berry. Um, <laughs> well, we you, know she's A-list. She's yeah, got she's, a Razzie herself. She's definitely got a Razzie there. Um, Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet are in it. Hmm? Um, Lee Schreiber and... Um, ooh, Australian actress. Blonde. Played Diana recently. Oh, yeah, Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts, uh, and so on and so on. All the actors in it are that sort of caliber. And, uh, yeah, um, it's it's not funny. Isn't it? No, it's supposed to be. That's a shame. But it's, uh, yeah, the... Um, <laughs> it had one job yeah. to be funny. Mm -hmm. So it's about 12 sketches and all. Each of them have a different director. Uh, not a laugh in it. Right. No. It's um, interesting. So, uh, and all tied together with this sort of ridiculous kind of bridging thing where these kids are hunting for an internet thing it it's, sounds very odd yeah you just watch the trailer um and that should tell you enough anyway okay all right so of course uh in the running for worst actor johnny depp for the lone ranger an <laughs> unusual position for johnny to be in he's very reliable but yes he was terrible in that ashton kutcher for jobs i didn't say that um adam sandler as usual he's got plenty <laughs> of razzies um uh jaden smith of course that's a little unfair he's a kid come on and uh, and Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> who is a, a reliable um, uh, nominee for the Razzies, he's uh, he's won several. He's always, always, always on the list because uh, he's a very hardworking actor. So he's got worst actor nods for Bullet to the Head, Escape Plan, and Grudge Match, hmm. which uh, is actually opening this week in Australia alongside Ten Years a Slave. Um, guess which one of those is going to fare better at the box office? Yes. So it's like somebody <clears throat> said, wouldn't it be cool if we got the guy who played Raging Bull and the guy who played Rocky in a fight movie together? And they did it. And yeah, be careful what you wish for, fans. His face is just something else, isn't it? There's Sylvester a, Stallone. It, it's difficult to tell how much of it is age and how much of it is, uh, is work. Um, he's obviously got a different plastic surgeon to his mum, <laughs> Jackie Stallone, who is, uh, you know... I haven't seen him. Um, so if, if you'd like to see a truly frightening image... Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, Google her on Google Image Search and, and have a look. And uh, you know how she makes her living? She's an arse whisperer. <laughs> I kid you not. Like like other people read palms, she reads arses. You're kidding. I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, but this is what really? our, this is what our really? civilization has come to. I am not joking. I'm telling She's you. She's an arse whisperer. She's an arse whisperer. <laughs> and what do the asses tell her? <laughs> you know the future. You know they like. You can tell a lot about a person's personality from looking at their arse. Excellent, apparently, according to Jackie. So and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's true. It's the truth. That's I'm not the most making... hilarious. I wouldn't make this thing. up. Oh god. Is... <laughs> oh, that family. And um, yes. Um, and uh, oh, and there's Naomi Watts. Oh, for Diana. Uh, yep. Hmm. Uh, and also for Movie 43, as we were talking about before. Oh, Halle Berry again for Movie 43. Mm -hmm. And The Call, which... Um, oh, yeah, yep. She was stuck in a box or something. Or mm. She was on a headset. Someone was stuck in a box. And, uh, and Tyler Perry is also up for Worst Actress. Mm -hmm. um, again, for the fat suit and the drag thing. Um, he has his audience. No one will ever know why. I'm struggling to even know who Tyler Perry is. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not missing out. You're not the market. Um, he yeah. uh, he makes movies for what marketers like to call the urban market, so they don't sound racist. <laughs> I got you now. Yep. And I exactly know who you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, that's uh, that's the best and the worst for this year. Um, the Oscars is on on March the third. If you're thinking of uh, of looking it up, are you thinking of looking it up? Well, you don't need to now. You've got all the info. 
Um, yeah, so that's uh, either on March the 2nd or March the 3rd. Watch out for it in the television. It's really weird that it used to be like the biggest event of the year when I was younger, and now we've got the internet, nobody gives a damn. No. So, and well, uh, they quickly skim over it. Hmm. It's mainly the fashion that people look out for these days, unfortunately. Oh, it's, it's, uh, who rocked up on the wed carpet wearing what? It's so cheesy, it puts you off pizza for months. Hmm. Um, and, uh, and of course, the, the host has always got a tough job because... You know, they're trying to make people, the people that are trying to make laugh are people who are not used to being told to sit still mm. and quiet for three hours. It's like, <laughs> especially if you're not nominated, it's like going to church for mm. these people. So making them laugh. Who is, it, it's Ellen DeGeneres hosting though. So uh, this year could be quite funny. I like her. <laughs> yeah, no, it, She's everybody, funny. everybody loves Ellen. But it, as mm. I said, it's a tough gig. If the room it's is a tough a, crowd. It's a tough crowd. I'm sure Ellen's had her fa fair share of tough crowds. They though. don't laugh. They're all sitting there jonesing for their Siggy and Coke fix. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, um, and uh, a person that we won't be seeing at the Oscars this year, or any year for that matter, Beyonce. Beyonce. I love your face. And this is Blow. You love the taste. Good title. I'm in. <laughs> Here's Beyonce doing what Beyonce does. Are you are you referring to the title? Um, <laughs> no, she's she's performing. She's singing and dancing. Right. And the That's name of the song for those who caught up late uh, is "Blow." It's a very awkward That's thing to say on radio, isn't it? Blow. Not for you. Um, Evidently. Oh no! It's Beyonce is a very fine artist in her own right, and, uh, and look, the she's made a lot of money it. from what she does. She certainly has. Anyway. Um, she was in a movie. Uh, Goldmember? <laughs> oh, right, she was in two movies then, because it was, a, I don't know, a Something Girls? It was a singing movie, it had... Oh, no. It was a singing movie, it had Eddie Murphy in it as well. It was a musical. Oh, that's why I didn't see it. That's why I didn't I see it. By. Yes, you know, it's a musical. You saw the word musical and you went like, no, no, like, no, 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 no I'm not going to that. Well, anyway, speaking of music... Um, now we're going to do a regular segment that we, uh, that, uh, that I particularly love. Um, oh, the Oscars are coming up and they're going to do that in memoriam bit, you know, where they, they <laughs> yeah. do a, a montage of all the people who've died. And, uh, since we were last on air, um, we have lost a lot of, uh, very important people. Nelson Mandela, of course, yeah. um, left us, uh, which is not going to do the, uh, numbers on that new movie about his life any harm. Um, it didn't. It didn't open to a great number of people, but I'm assuming that its number is going to come up uh, mm. after the Oscars. Um, and also Peter O'Toole, uh, who we're certainly poor for having uh, left. But uh, in this last week, we're, there's... Uh, that was Paul Walker. Oh, we, we spoke about Paul Walker last time we were here. Oh, sorry. And uh, and then, oh, the next week, um, which, of course, we weren't on, I was going to talk about how Tila Tequila came out in the... You know, Tila Tequila? Maybe we just shouldn't bother. You know, some, is she Asian? Um, yeah, sort of. We're not really sure. A lot of plastic <laughs> surgery involved. Oh, okay. So, uh, and she's a porn actress, and uh, oh, yeah, 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 she, yeah, she came out with this whole thing about how um, uh, his death was a Jewish conspiracy of some kind. Again, so everything she says from this point on uh, can just be a, just <laughs> let it wash over you. Ad admitted straight <laughs> to the ignore file. <laughs> anyway, in dead for reals this week, uh, the great Pete Seeger has died. Um, mm. Who's Pete Seeger? You ask. Yes. Who is Pete Seeger? You have Seeger? no idea who Pete Seeger is? Well, you might not know the man, but you certainly know his work. And uh, I don't really have a taste of any of his music with us. Um, but, um, is he blues? Uh, no, no, he's a, he's a folk music. He, oh, folk. He, uh, uh, some of his more <laughs> memorable tunes that you might have heard, uh, If I Had a Hammer, Turn, 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 Where Have All the Flowers Gone, and, uh, and Kisses Sweeter Than Wine. Um, and, uh, oh yes, uh, of course, uh, We Shall Overcome, which became the anthem of the 60s uh, anti-war movement. So if you've seen one of those awful, self-serving, baby boomer pieces of crap about how awesome the 60s were and how they were all in peace and love, you will have certainly heard Seeger's music. They always go with turn, turn, turn when they do the montage of this is what happened in the next few years kind of thing. Hmm. Um, those movies have a tendency to gloss over how badly the movement failed and then the consumer driven cesspit they led us all into in the uh, in the years since so thanks for that baby boomers um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody, can, nobody can buy a house now because of you people you <laughs> suck um, so, <laughs> so but uh, if you want to hear any of his music um, you could always grab the uh, uh, Forrest Gump soundtrack and check out uh, most of them there 
<laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, any musical director is not really trying will always pull up a Pete Seeger. But uh, yes, um, he died at the age of 95 or something. So oh, he had a good innings. That's, yeah. that's what we always say. He had a good innings. Good for him. <laughs> good for you know, him. Oh, he died at the age of 95. You know, nobody ever saw, oh, at the, for the last 20 of those years, he was, he was bedridden in an iron lung and he had no memory. Oh, but he had a good run. <laughs> as long as the number's going up. It's all that matters. As long as the number's going up. Yes. yes. So, um, farewell to Pete Seeger. Uh, uh, he outlived a great many of his fans. Probably. Probably. Um, and, uh, yes. Uh, and that's really all we have time for here at Movie oh, is Group. That all? Is that all? I'm afraid so. We're about I four minutes. More people would have died. We're, we're about four minutes. I'm afraid that that's the only notable death in the last week. <laughs> Um, we can go back and remember Peter O'Toole, but we've already, we've already had the mawkish and histrionic uh, um, uh, tributes to his name from a few weeks ago. And, uh, and yes, Nelson Mandela, whose death was rendered funny by a guy pretending to sign language on the television next to Obama. <laughs> you didn't see that? No, I didn't. You, you missed that whole thing. You know, apparently when, he was, when Obama was giving his speech at Na Mandela's funeral, there was a guy signing next to him. And uh, and it was discovered later that he was just making random movements with his hands. So he wasn't actually doing Auslan or anything, or whatever the language is. It's, sign language. No, he, he he was just making random movements because they'd uh, they'd hired this guy saying like you know could you do sign language and he said yes yes I can. Uh, <laughs> and he found himself standing next to the no. president of the United States at Nelson Mandela's funeral, just waving his hands about. That is the biggest. I know. So most <laughs> disrespectful thing you can do, but so funny. <laughs> that's, so that's really the thing that the funeral was most notable for. So, but oh. uh, in any case, uh, Nelson Mandela, the only beloved politician of the 20th century, <laughs> has gone. Um, and of course, people who, you know, never gave a damn about him in life have all of a sudden come out to say how much they loved him. That always happens in somebody. I look forward to dying, you know, so that people will stand up at my graveside and say what an awesome guy he was. <laughs> Um, so yeah, rest assured that no matter how big a dick you are, they will always say nice things about your funeral. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, yes. On, on that note. On that note. Um, Speaking of dying. That's really where we're wrapping up Movie Group for this week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have enjoyed the show, why not hiss up on Twitter? We're going to do this one more time. I'm just going to check the Twitter account here <laughs> because... Um, it's it's bound to be overloaded. Oh, we've got one follower. Hey. <laughs> so hello to you out there. Look at that. Is that me? Um, probably. <laughs> I, uh, let's, let's just have a look at the follower list. Yep, Brad new I've got one follower, yeah. and it's you. Uh, you're uh, welcome. Uh, you're uh, welcome. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> I feel loved. Anyway, um, if there is anybody living out there and you would like to be our second ever follower, I'll, s <laughs> I'll send you a free gift of some kind. Uh, uh, bless. And, okay. uh, <laughs> and, yes. So, uh, um, thanks for listening. Anyway. Uh, thanks thank for you us. so much for listening. I've had a blast. Um, good. Have you had a good time too? I have. I've laughed lots. So that's always a good sign. So yes, if you are listening out there, thank you for listening. This is always my favorite part of the week. Um, I hope that you'll join us next week for Movie Groove. Until then, uh, this is Alice Lockhart and Brad Dewance. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your lives. <laughs>